way from Chattanooga, we want to introduce you to She Trucking Diversity and Inclusion, the future of women and minorities in trucking industry. Now let me tell you something, this is going to be phenomenal and I want you to put your hands together right now. Put your hands together right now and start clapping because we have some of the top female women in the trucking and transportation industry here today. And so we're getting ready to get this thing started off. And all the way, all the way from Orlando, I want you to put your hands together because we have a special guest and we have a special poem. We have a special guest and we have a special poem from Miss Jennifer. She's gonna be reading a poem and the poem that she's reading is by Johnny Morrison. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, everyone. I tell my students, when you get these jobs that you have been so brilliantly trained for, just remember that your real job is that if you are free, and I say that again, if you are free, you need to free somebody else. If you have some power, then your job is to empower somebody else. This is not just a grab bag candy game. Toni Morrison. All righty, we really do appreciate that. Our next guest that we have here today is the COO of She Trucking. Her name is Dr. Erica. She's gonna be reading off the mission statement. Put your hands together for Dr. Erica. Good evening, everyone. The She Trucking Foundation is a 501c3 nonprofit organization that is committed to helping women and minorities establish and maintain successful careers in the transportation industry. Thank you. All righty. Now let me tell you something. Transportation is not just about trucking, but it's about selling, it's about transporting goods, services, wherever, all over the world. And so this next guest that I have for you right now, coming all the way from Brooklyn, New York, I want you to put your hands together right now for Shaquana Teasley. Hello, 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 hello. For those of you that do not know me, my name is Shaquana Teasley. I am known in the industry as Shaq. I am the CEO and founder of Agate Solutions. Our core mission is to ensure that diversity and inclusion is always at the forefront of global logistics and international trade to ensure that everybody has a fair chance in a space that lacks diversity and inclusion. Let's talk a little bit about what is diversity and inclusion. Everyone deserves to be in a space where they are included. What does that look like in the workplace? That looks like programs that identify with the workforce. It looks like the opportunity to celebrate holidays that are untraditional. It looks like being in a space where you can be your whole self. And what does your whole self look like? If it looks like this, then that's what we gonna accept because our swag is our culture and it will not be denied. If we already know that the trucking and transportation industry lacks diversity, what do you think that means for global logistics? I partnered with 3PLs and freight forwarders to move freight globally, both air, ocean, road, and rail. That's every mode of transportation outside of a pipeline. In addition to that, I am an expert in U.S. customs regulations and the customs regulations of every major continent. So I advise companies on what is required to ensure compliance for the movement of goods legally. Do you think there's a lot of Shaquanas out here moving freight globally? So guess what that means for me? I got to represent every Shaquana out here, and I'm going to do that proudly. And how do I do that? I make sure that I represent us in a place that we're professional. We are not discriminated against, not in my space. I have over 300 students of diverse backgrounds. 
What is my goal to empower them? What is my goal to make a powerful impact that they can not just see me and see what I do and think that that is so unattainable? I make sure they can touch it, they can feel it. I connect them with the right people to change their lives. Yes. Diversity and inclusion will not be the reason that people do not have a chance, not on my watch. Everyone in this room, everyone that has the breath that can come out of your mouth every single day has a responsibility to be making sure the person that looks like the underdog is totally represented. If you are not doing that, you are part of the problem. If the Shaquan is in your life, don't feel comfortable, but you have the knowledge and the expertise to open the door and you are not supporting that, during your quiet time, when you're really real with yourself, you part of the problem, I promise. I was part of the problem. I was blessed with three college degrees for absolutely free. All my certifications for absolutely free. You know why? Not just because God favored me, but he favored me. But I knew early on in my career to walk into every space and ask for what I want. Diversity and inclusion will not be the definition of the lack of success. It does not have to be. If you're seeing someone in your workplace, if you're seeing someone in any capacity where you can make a difference and you're taking a blind eye, then you are just as bad as the people in power that are making the regulations to hold people back. Not on my watch. I'm gonna conclude with this. We all have many gifts and talents. We all have a special something that nobody else has. Everybody can't do what I'm doing right here, right now. But God has given all of us something we have to embrace that irregardless of the sex, religion, color, etc. that makes people different. Because we are different, united, we look like the best thing popping. When we are ununited, then there is lack of empowerment for everyone. Not on my watch. When I say not on my watch, I mean not on your watch. We all have a place here and we all have a responsibility. Again, my name is Shaquana Teasley. I am the CEO and founder of Agus Solution. May today be the day that you understand that you are an impact. You make an impact. You are empowering. People need you. Stand up. Don't be part of the problem and make it not happen on your watch. All righty, that was great right there. Now, all the way from Lee. England! We have Andrew Pickerel, who's from k &M. He's going to be sharing a presentation with us just for a few, mem for a few moments here right now. Setting the expectations, Larry. Thank you. Thank you, Shaq. Uh, exactly. Uh, be part of the solution, not part of the problem. My name's Andrew, and my company, k &M. We first met uh, Cherie and the sea trucking community at Chattanooga. Uh, they have a big show out there in September and uh, we figured it was something that we would like to be involved in and something that we needed to be involved in and uh, like Shaq was saying, be part of the solution, don't be part of the uh, problem. So uh, let's look at some facts and figures. Um, boring stuff, sorry. Uh, US Bureau of Labor Statistics data for truck transportation show that women make up just 12.4% of the trucking workforce. Now that is up from 10 years ago, it was, it's up by over 10%, which is great. But diversity as a whole, in the addition, in the industry, 76.6%, 75% is white, 70% black, 4% Asian, and 22.6% Hispanic. But what about all the other bits of diversity. What about the LGBTQ community that's now at 7% self-identifying? We need to look at those statistics as well. And uh, again, back to Shaq, be part of the solution, not part of the problem. Yeah. 
So why is everybody so interested in diversity right now? Well, because it's the right thing, but also there's a massive driver shortage. So it's gonna help with that as well, right? So one of the things that my company is uh, helping with, sales promo, is um, particularly for uh, women in the community, it's women in STEM, which I have to remember is science, technology, engineering, and math. So we are going out of our way to promote women in those four industries, which we hope is gonna help with diversity. So top issues in trucking industry, all the usual stuff we know about, but really should be on top of there, along with driver rotate, retention and hours of service and compliance and all that boring stuff, should be diversity, right? So this is how important it is. Okay, sales pitch. So welcome. Uh, she Trucking community, Matt's community, what we are doing, if anybody's interested in looking for technology, we're going to give you six months free just because you attended this presentation and you attended Matt's. So thank you very much. Over, back to you, Larry. All righty. Now is the time that we all been waiting for. We got the panel here. How many people ready for the panel? Are you ready for the panel? All righty, I'm ready for them too. All righty, at this time we're getting ready to introduce Michelle Weathersby. Also, can we get a young man over here? Can we get a young man over here to help them up this thing? All righty. Next we have Masharee Rhodes. <laughs> All righty. Next we have Desiree Woods. All the way from Las Vegas. Next we have Kay from Japan. And then we have Hans Galliott. Last but not least, we have all the way from Houston, Texas, Miss Jerry. <laughs> all righty. So what I want you to do, I want you to tell us about yourself. Give us your name and tell us what you do in the industry, starting with uh, Michelle Weathersby. Good afternoon, my name is Michelle Lenore Weathersby and I am the CEO of Michelle Lenore Enterprises and Lens Consulting Firm. And I help women businesses and minority businesses bridge the gaps with primes and with large organizations for government certifications so everyone is winning. Everyone's getting that uh, $30 million, $10 million, $5 million contract. All righty, I like it. Hey everyone, my name is Marjorie Rhodes. Good evening, is it afternoon? It's afternoon, it's been a long day. It's been a long day, but I help multi six-figure trucking companies scale their businesses to seven figures with my GPS roadmap and my seven-figure, uh, GPS method and my seven-figure roadmap, all so that you guys can put your business on autopilot and of course, pay the least amount of money in taxes. I know that was a lot, I know who I serve. <laughs> Hi, my name is Desiree Wood. I am a truck driver and the president and founder of the Real Women in Trucking organization. We are an advocacy organization. Um, we want to raise the standards in training and raise awareness of sexual violence in training that causes a lot of women, especially women of color, to fall through the cracks in the early months. And we want to raise awareness of the companies that need to support something like this and be here because this is more than a tagline, diversity and inclusion, right? So um, I'll pass it over to you. Hi everybody, my name is Kay Mikishi and I head up marketing at Beyond Trucks, which is a software platform to help small carriers grow and to um, free up their time so they can really take care of their drivers. Um, I consult also and help B2B software companies grow from zero to about nine, nine figures in valuation. Um, it's just really, really super passionate about women and diversity in this topic. Um, quick shout out to Sheree Moore. I think what they're doing is really, really fabulous with She Trucking. Um, 
and also leading partnerships with Beyond Trucks. And we are very, very, very proud uh, to be partnered with an organization like Street Trucking, who is very aligned with our missions. Thanks. My name is Hans Gallen. I'm CEO of Beyond Trucks. Um, I serve on two non-for-profit boards. Um, the first one is Global SF, which is an organization f originally founded by uh, now Governor uh, Gavin Newsom in California. Uh, it's dedicated to equity, uh, economic development uh, in the state. Uh, and my second role uh, in, on the non-for-profit is, is I'm treasurer of LGBT truckers, um, an organization dedicated to awareness and uh, equity uh, for LGBT uh, truck drivers. Alrighty, let me go ahead and introduce one more person, Natasha Martinez! Last but not least, correct? <laughs> uh, my name is Natasha Martinez. I also work with um, Hans and Kay. Um, uh, my background has been in transportation for about 20 plus years. I've ran large organizations for um, wholesale distributors, recently Vice President for United Natural Foods, and ran about 3,000 truck drivers. Thank you. Hi, my name is Jerry Banks with Life on the Road Recruiting. I'm on the board of the She Trucking Foundation. Uh, I own a third-party truck driver recruitment agency. Uh, we work with over 60 different carriers across the U.S. placing drivers. Uh, in addition, my agency has niched itself down to support drivers that have had a violation in the FMCSA Drug and Alcohol Clearinghouse. So we do education in truck driving schools, um, and we help drivers navigate through this process to safely and compliantly get back in the truck. Alrighty, and my name is Larry Cothran. Everybody calls me L Boogie, and I'm blessing the Lord, highly favored, excited about Jesus, excited about the Word of God. My cup is running over, and I still want some more. How about you? What I do is I'm an influencer, plus, I help people make the transition from a company driver to an owner operator, telling them which trust to buy, which lanes to run, and everything else up under the sun. So that's what I do. So let's get into these questions, everybody. Right, let's jump right in, into it. We're talking about diversity and inclusion. How can companies be more diverse? How can we? How can these companies be more diverse when hiring people, when when uh, when bringing people on? How can how can how can these companies be more diverse? Anybody? Well, um, I know in the entry level driving sector, which is where I uh, mostly focused on, there it is actually very diverse, but it is not inclusive. And, and that is something that I see quite a lot. Um, there has to be uh, an attention to some of these drivers that are coming in that need the support system in place to help them get through that critical first six months so that they're insurable. And I see just many of them falling through the cracks bad training, bullying, sexual violence. So the community is very important to have a community around you that can help foster this. And the companies really need to be more aware of it and take action because it's not that they're not recruiting at record levels. They are, they are not following it through to make sure this becomes an insurable driver that can go on and become a, a successful owner operator. Right, right. Anybody else? Anybody else? Yes, Larry, I'd like to answer that. So one of the things that companies need to look at, like Andrew, he brought out the numbers. If we're looking at the numbers for a company to grow to whatever goals that they have, they have to be diverse. If we're looking at the numbers that as a corporation, that your revenue per year can grow from 9% to 36% with having a diverse workforce within the leadership space. So if we're just talking about numbers, how do we bring these individuals in? We have to hear their voice, hear what they need, hear what they are saying, okay? But like I said, if we're just looking at the numbers, I want my business to grow by 36%. So if you are a small business and you're making 100,000, 200,000, if you're a larger business and you're making 25 million, 36% of 25 million is what? So we have to hear the voices of the individuals who are coming in. And when we hear the voices and we begin to make the changes for our business to grow, our businesses will grow. I like it, I love it. Anybody else? Hans. I wanna make a comment on um, fundraising. 
uh, big corporations, uh, sponsoring non-for-profits, or sometimes even venture funds who invest in um, new businesses. I most recently read a statistic that, uh, based on a study that was done by um, Doxen, which is a technology company, they found out that women who fundraise need to take 50% more meetings, but on average raise 25% less money than men. Now let's think about that, what that means. That means how much more does a woman have to work to raise money that's even less than a man? That is not in proportion with the representation of women and men in society. And that applies for all areas that are diverse. That applies for women of color, people of color in general. It applies to gay or lesbian or queer leaders who have to raise funds for their organizations. So if you are in the privileged position to actually donate money to organizations or give money um, to invest in certain organizations, you should keep in mind, can you make allocations that are proportionate for these organizations so that these organizations can flourish, at least have a fair chance to represent their community. That's great. I want to hear what you got to say. Yeah, I'll add uh, two stories. So my dad used to be a truck driver in Japan, actually. And he moved to, I was born and raised in Amish County, Pennsylvania, in a really, really tiny town. Um, and he applied to be a truck driver here in the US, but he didn't know English. So I think one of the things, one proactive thing that we can do is, hey, you know, he's a really, really hard worker. Afterwards, he became a carpenter and I helped him with his, grow his small carpentry business in Pennsylvania. Um, but it's like, hey, we kind of lost, you know, to the company that tried to hire him. They thought he was stupid because he couldn't speak English, right? Because he didn't understand it. And so, sorry, I'm getting emotional now. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I think it is, I haven't thought about this in a while actually, because <laughs> um, I'm very, very grateful, you know, to everything he, he gave me, um, you know, very, I, I went to an Ivy League school, got a scholarship, I've traveled 50 countries, I speak three languages, I live in New York City in a nice apartment, and it's all thanks to his hard work, right? Um, and, <laughs> and my mom, <laughs> obviously. Um, but that, I think, is the story of, of the United States of America, right? That's the story of, hey, he didn't know English. Um, they worked really, really hard to come here, right? Um, to give their kids a good life, and I'm very grateful for that. Um, so I think it is uh, not discriminating people by their language, the color of their skin, you know, not thinking that they're stupid because they're not like you, right? And I think that translates into whether you're hiring drivers or people in your back office um, and, and beyond as well, right? And so I think the actionable thing is a lot of times when people are making decisions and hiring decisions, they, it's called pattern recognition. We tend to, birds of a feather flock together, right? And so I challenge each and every one of you to look around your friend's circle, to look around who you hang out with, and challenge yourself to get out of your comfort zone and to hang out with people who are not like you, who do not look like you, who speak a different language. It can be at a neighborhood bar. It doesn't matter. Say hi to a random stranger that is completely different from you and start breaking. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> um, just, it's a personal thing, right? Just challenge yourself. Talk to somebody that doesn't look like you, that doesn't maybe share the same values as you, whether it's political or not, doesn't matter. Just have an open mind. That's, that's what I would say. All righty. Now, let me ask this question right here to Desiree. How can we implement diversity inclusion to women of color in the LGBTQ community? We have a, we have a, our friends from the LGBTQ truck driver network. Um, they've, it's their first year, so welcome, and we're so glad that you came up here. 
Uh, this is such an important panel because this is really a history making event. This has never happened at any other trucking show. But this is the tagline of the year, diversity, equity, and inclusion. So there's a lot of companies that are very eager to slap this on their website without doing anything else about it. And that's why this is such an important event. So I guess the first step is, you know, you got to walk the walk. And, and we, we see you, um, you know, in the offices and what's going out on the front lines. The truck drivers are the face of the organization. We're the ones that pick up and deliver. And I talk to supply, at supply chain events and I'm starting to raise awareness uh, there in, in, you know, make sure the companies that are in your supply chain rotation are walking the walk. They're not just slapping this on there and having their diversity and equity and inclusion panel with nobody that has color in their skin. And as Sheree said, when uh, I think it was a year ago, don't talk about us, talk to us, with us. And, and that is something that, you know, it's 2022 and it's time for all these companies that want the tagline and the motto to get on down here. And I see a lot of them are not here that have that on their website. All righty. What opportunities do you want to see in the industry? Ms. Jerry. What opportunities do you want to see for women in the industry? So from an opportunity perspective, I think we definitely want to see more women from from a safe parking perspective. Women need safe parking. Um, also from an opportunity perspective, um, just the information, information on how to get into the industry, how to get involved and know what, um, what avenues they can take. Not just trucking, women are in recruiting, they're women dispatchers, um, they're women brokers, um, not just driving. If you don't want to take the driving avenue, there's other avenues that you can get into. So just more awareness, awareness of what's available to women in the industry. And, and how can we include our community? How can we talk to our community? Knowing that it may be upon us that we have women, young girls, 18 to 21, that's coming in. How can we, how can we recruit them? How can we? This is really important to me because we do have a lot of uh, uh, teenagers now that are able to come in this industry. And the, the, the women that get uh, into this industry and they go through these fast track uh, companies, company sponsored training, and then they're expected to do team driving with somebody that they have never met before. They have maybe come from a broken home, they're vulnerable. A lot of them that have been harassed or sexually assaulted, some very violently. I've been an expert witness in some of these cases. Many of these individuals never get justice and they just leave the industry. It's so important that we make sure that these young women and men and people from the LGBTQ community are knowing, go to a community college, go to qualified CDL training, and go to a company that does not require team driving as a phase of training with a total stranger for up to six months because these companies are bringing in 100 people every single week, year after year, yet they still say they have a driver shortage and nobody is holding them accountable for how many people went out of the system and went away and had their life damaged because they were beat up or worse on the truck with somebody that was supposed to be training them or be their co-driver. So that is really the most important message. You must research these companies and Google the complaints before you get involved with them because some of them will blacklist you and you are not hireable somewhere else. I want to say one thing too. Um, for myself, starting off in the trucking industry, straight out of high school, um, I just um, had my first child, I was about 19 years old. I wish then I knew about a company like a sheet trucking. I wish I knew that there was organizations. I didn't realize, you're right, how hard I had to work. One being young, one being a female, and being Hispanic. That was everything I could do that was not in my favor, correct? So I made sure like, I followed everybody. I, I wanted to learn how to drive a truck. I wanted to, do, but, but again, there was no, there was no role model for me in my industry. I was working for large shippers. Unfortunately, they weren't. They were all older, much older, 
white males. So, you know, trying to hang out, I think about the same thing, like we bring drivers in or you bring other people in, like what are your accommodations for those people? How do you make them feel right? You gotta feel welcome. So a huge shout out to She Trucking, Real, Real Women in Trucking. I think it's just the greatest thing ever. I wish I'd had that when I was there. I don't think it would have taken me 20 years to get where I got. Desiree, I got a question for you. <laughs> you seem to have the hot seat right now. <laughs> Do you believe that drivers can voice a contrary opinion without fear of negative consequences in trucking? Uh, no, I don't. Um, I mean, I didn't plan on coming to this event. Um, I'm like, so these trucking conventions, but it was so important for me to be here for Sheree's big moment here. And also I won't name the name of the drivers uh, sponsored for me to make sure that I came here because there's a lot of companies um, forcing these drivers to be their face of their company, but they're not really doing the hard work they need to do to find out what's going on with the drivers. They want them out front recruiting. They want them to have the logo of this other organization on their truck and be driving around with it. And you know, it's uh, this women, and we support women is like this catch all phrase. What does that mean? You know, do you, do you understand the problems that are going on with the drivers and now you want me to be on the ad for your company? And it's forcing them to want to have me come up here and say this to them, you know? Like, don't use me for your ads if you are not going to find out our concerns. Right. My Cherie, what do you love about the trucking industry and women in the trucking industry since you're on the financial side of trucking? Can you ask the question again? <laughs> what do you love about the trucking industry and the women in trucking since you're on the financial side of the trucking? Yeah, I, when I tell you I love the women in the trucking industry really because it's I'm a woman, okay? But <laughs> what I've learned with working with companies is, is that, and don't get upset, men, you guys are not the organized ones. You guys are not the ones that mess with the numbers. If I'm being honest, when I'm working with my my uh, companies, I'm working with the wives that are in the background and the husband said, just do it. And we, a lot of times, get pushed to the back end as if they are not doing majority of the work. So yes, women need to be included. And I love the fact that women are included and they're helping their spouse or their husband to do it financially. But something else that um, trucking companies can do is make sure that you are educating your truckers, your owner operators to actually know finances. And I know that's gonna be hard because a lot of trucking companies don't know finances themselves. But you have to make sure that you're educating people on the financial perspective. I have consultations all the time where you guys can't even tell me what your bottom line is or what you brung in. I brung in a lot of money. I have a lot of cash flow, but I can look at your statements if you even have a statement and it says negative. It's negative, which means that you're running for these companies that are not including you cor correctly or properly for you're, you're an indentured servant. That is what's going on and no one is recognizing that everyone is saying, I need to run more miles, I need to run more miles and no one's looking at the numbers. So yes, I love to see my women in the trucking industry because one, we're making our husbands or spouse look at the numbers. I don't know what's going on, but you need to stop and you need to look at this number. It's not gonna just be a free for all. You're not, you're gonna end up going out of business if you do not look at what's going on. So to my women, to my spouses who are out there helping their husbands, I see you with your family member badge on. Okay, I know, cause I was a family member helping my husband with them numbers. <laughs> we, I appreciate you, we appreciate you, do not stop. And then the companies, make sure you are educating your uh, drivers on what the finances look like. What does the number look like if it says negative? If I brung in $3,000 for one load, but then you had $20, $3,200 go out, that means you're at a negative $200. That means you can't eat. That means how you gonna park. That means how are you gonna get home? You're not worried about this because you have another check coming in from the other load, but you haven't worried about you didn't even make any money off this other load. So you have to know these things. So I don't know if I, you know, did I answer the question? That was great right there. Everybody but give it up for my Cherie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All righty, so we're gonna start right now wrapping this thing up. We're gonna start all the way at the end with Michelle's Lenora Weatherby. And so what we're gonna ask you is this question right here, and this question is for everyone that's on the panel right now. 
How can women and minorities be prepared for the future in the transportation industry? Education. Um, technology is changing so fast in every industry. You know, we're hearing about automated cars, automated trucks. They are out there. And because I, I want to talk to all my women, it doesn't matter what color you are, this is the season of the woman, okay? Corporations, the government is looking for you. And my Cherie, she talked about the numbers. Get your house in order, get your paperwork in order because the government wants to give you money through grants, through contracts. They want to get, the corporations want to give you money through uh, grants, through, again, contracts. But you have to be educated. And what does that look like? Again, having your paperwork in order, knowing what's happening, happening within the industry. So if they do ask you, you know, what your specialty is, X, Y, and Z, and you can't tell them, then they don't feel comfortable about doing business with you. So get ready to get everything in order. You know, that's why I partnered up with um, She Trucking, because she has a great community. This is just an opportunity for us to speak our voice and for people to hear what we have to say. All right, let's get one minute apiece, and we'll ride on that. My Cherie. All right, the so future. I'm going back to finances, y'all. That's where I'm going to be, the truckers account. Now, I, I stay in my lane, and my lane is the finance. And so I would say that the opportunities would be for corporate. You know, hire someone that looks, that does not look like you. Hire a female. Hire a black woman into your office to do the work. And where are we going? I want to talk about the education portion. You have to educate yourselves. And right now, there's like this big craze that there's influencers and everybody's selling courses and you can get it. But what about if the trucking company actually purchased the course for their drivers? That helps. That would be a, a great help. I shouldn't have to go to you guys individually when a corporation could say, okay, here's this course you need to take to make sure that you don't go out of business as an owner operator by the end of next year. Or if we're thinking about the future, we all want to build legacies. We didn't get into trucking to drive trucking for 50 years and just be driving the truck. Did you leave your kids with something? You have to educate yourselves financially. And as much as you do not want to look at the numbers, you have to look at the numbers. Right, right. Desiree, all the well, way from Las Vegas. Well, I, w I would really like people to get more involved with improving this industry. We need to repeal the Fair Labor Standards Act that exempts truck drivers from being paid for all of their work time. Say that again. We need to get more involved with the truck parking coalition work that is going on. A lot of people think we've done nothing with truck parking, but Scott, right there, we've been doing this since the murder of Jason Rivenberg. Jason's law was a petition that became a law. It is the law of the land. Every state right now has to renew their freight plan. Their freight plan can include truck parking, and truck parking is an eligible activity for funding. They have to do this, but they need truck drivers to participate. So I am on an appointed member of some freight advisory committees in a couple different states, but they're always looking for truck drivers. So when you see these surveys on Facebook, when we share them, Maryland, Texas, truck parking, they need truck drivers. Get in touch with your state. Say, I wanna be involved with the freight advisory committee, um, multi the economic planning division. They need your voice. So for me, help us with this movement to improve the standards, right. bring awareness to the LGBTQ community. I would like to actually see a unity flag on websites of companies where it is friendly for them to come to and apply. Right. So we don't have to wonder, like, do you want us or what? It's time. Right, right. I say obtain knowledge. And one of the biggest tools to allow you to do that is technology, visibility, um, and have mentors, right? She Trucking is an amazing organization. Again, we're so proud to be partnered with them because they genuinely care. You need to get mentors. You need to surround yourself with other people who care about you as a driver or your fellow drivers and that want what's best for you to help you grow, right? Who you surround yourself is who you become. So surround yourself with the right people. Hans. Thank you. Uh, teeing off from that, um, 
At Beyond Trucks, we build technology that helps small trucking companies to become more efficient and actually to get an, an equal crack at the market. Um, and for us to be able to do that and be innovative, what we need to do, we need to constantly agree that everyone in our team can disagree with me, even though I'm the CEO. I don't care. I want people to argue with me. And I think in this country, sometimes we don't dare argue publicly anymore. We just agree to disagree and move on. So I think we need to take the courage as leaders of our own organizations or even as drivers to have the difficult conversations. Be respectful of the other party, but also be inviting to, to disagreement. And I think that's a very fundamental human uh, capability that we need to nurture. Uh, I think it's wonderful that Jerry invited us all up here on stage because um, we all pursue the same cause, maybe a different angle, and even if there's organizations you know, who are pursuing the same cause as, as other organizations, we, we all carry up with the same thing. So having these conversations is so, so critical uh, for us to, to move forward. Natasha! I totally agree with everything so far each one of y'all have said, so education, technology. But let me tell you something, when you walk into that room, you walk into an office to go interview, and you don't look like anybody else, own it. Be confident, that's good. You start. You open the door for the diversity. You be the first one, right? It's, it's, it's just how it works in this industry today. And if you don't get heard, step up, speak louder. You still don't be heard? Stand on the table, start screaming and hollering. You're going to be heard. Confidence, own the room, do it. Open the door for the next person. And when you get in there, keep opening the door. I think Shaq said it earlier, if you don't, then you're part of the problem. Be the solution, people. Be the solution. Yes. All righty. Last but not least, all the way from Houston, Texas, Miss Jerry. Thank you. So, you know, along with everyone else, um, I think mine is education. Education, education, education. We're bringing 18 to 21 year olds in the industry. They need to know how to move when they enter this industry, how to get ready and prepare for this industry. My team, Life on the Road Recruiting, we speak with at least 10 to 15 drivers a day. Brand new drivers, fresh out of truck driving school, failed a drug test, okay? Their career is over before it even starts. And so everyone has a past. You know, some of these drivers, they're, they're, what we hear is, you know, oh, I thought I had waited long enough before I started school. I thought it was, you know, 60 days or 90 days or whatever the time period. I'm trying to change my life. I need a new job. And now this has happened. I thought it was long enough. And so there's nothing that we can do for these drivers. Fresh out of school with their class A CDL, zero experience, a failed drug test, or a refusal because they don't understand what a refusal looks like, education needs to happen. So I've been speaking with the FMCSA, I met with them this week, and we're going to educate new drivers coming into, into this industry so they know how to move before they get here. Give it up for every single person on this panel right now. That was good, wasn't it? You like it? You love it? You want some more of it? I like it. I love it. I want some more of it. <laughs> All right, at this time right here, we're having a Q&A. So any questions that anybody got out there, raise your hand, and we're going to come to you, and we want to answer your questions. So who has a question? Anybody got a question? Anybody, 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 anybody? Anybody, 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 anybody? Right here, all righty, here we come. All right, what's your question? Hello everyone, my name is Chantel Taylor. Uh, my question is for Michelle. Would you please elaborate on the government certifications as far as women in um, minority business for the federal government funding? Absolutely, thank you Chantel. So right now, Biden has signed a trillion dollar bill for infrastructure, you know, and under that bill, it's technology, it's bridges, it's transportation, it's everything. His big push is minorities and women owned businesses because he realized again, when Andrew was, you know, he had the numbers, it should have grown. It's not growing. All right. And so as women, if we do have a small business, we need to go ahead and we need to apply to get certified so we can get these contracts so we can stay at home with our children. 
You know, that's huge for us. So we can buy and purchase our own benefits. So we can take care of our families. And so our voices can be heard because it makes a difference if my business is making a million dollars or if my business is making a hundred million dollars. Because guess what I can do? I can go ahead and donate to She Trucking. Again, I'm talking about education to educate other women, to get other women certified. And as we begin to unite, then our voices will be heard. So it is, it's a, it's a free process. Uh, most definitely, you know, uh, check out She Trucking. Like I said, I've partnered up with She Trucking to really have these open and honest conversations to really get through this process so these ladies and these minorities can get certified. That was amazing. Who else got a question, comment, concern? Right here, what's your question? Somebody got a question somewhere. <laughs> Ain't nobody got no questions? All right, who wanna give a give? You got a question, all right. I knew somebody had a question. You gotta say something, man. All right, what's your name? My name is Jamar, I got a question for you. What, where you from? I am from Memphis, Tennessee. All righty, what's your question? Uh, my question is from Marjorie Road. What's one of the biggest mistakes people make in doing the taxes? What's the one that, like some of the biggest mistakes during tax time the treasurer's made? Some of the biggest, one of the biggest mistakes that people are making during tax time? I wouldn't even say it's during tax time because the biggest mistake is that you're not keeping up with your numbers throughout the year. There is no during tax time. You don't prepare for taxes at the end of the year. You prepare for taxes every single quarter, every single day, because you can't come in and say, fix it, save me. I need a life raft. I don't have a life raft for you because you should have came to me in January of last year for the next January. You coming to me now and saying, fix it, and the year has closed out. So definitely keeping up with numbers, that is the biggest thing. The shoe boxes, oh my God, if you watch me on Instagram or YouTube, I deaf to these shoe boxes and these receipts. I mean, Jesus, I don't wanna do it. I don't wanna count the receipts. I don't, it, it's not good enough. I'm, I'm speaking for accountants now, y'all. It's not good enough for you to bring your receipt and tell me to figure it out. No, you figure it out. So that during the year, you would have figured out that your business is in trouble. During the year, you would have figured out that you should have paid estimated quarterly taxes. Not, oh no, what is that? Ooh. All right, so, I mean, it's not a biggest problem. You guys have to be prepared for it continuously. It is, if not, it'll sneak up on you and the IRS don't play. If you guys have had an IRS letter or the IRS has called you, they do not play. I am, I'm not playing with the IRS. I'm not playing with those shoebox receipts. I need you to have it in order because I care for my business and you should care for yours. I just wanna piggyback off of that. So when my dad ran his carpentry business, the same small business, so those shoeboxes, receipts, I hear you. Because <laughs> I had to do that. Um, so one of the things of Beyond Trucks, the company that I'm working with, is um, we have a short video clip too. Is um, I love it because we're supporting small business owners who maybe don't can't hire somebody like my dad could, right? Like he hired me for free, right? It was like we're giving you food and a roof. That's your payment. Um, and so what we do is we help the small fleets um, basically automate all that. So you don't need the shoebox full of receipts. Everything's sort of automated. And, and we'll sh I think there's a small video that we can, um, sh there's a video in the back. If you can start the video, there's a short little couple second clip that we can kind of show you sort of what we do. This is Ali Bar, owner of Reliable Cargo Logistics. As I was researching and putting together the company, I came across Beyond Trucks. Yeah, just uh, right away fell in love with the software that they have is saving me a significant amount of time from the accounting uh, part to talking about finding loads and, no more and just boxes. putting everything under one platform. I couldn't find a better product to, to help me at this point of my uh, journey. Yeah, so again, it's, it's kind of like you're saying, right? Or hiring somebody like you who knows the numbers and how to structure it right, and getting the right tools and systems in place uh, that are affordable, right, instead of hiring somebody out. Um, I, yes, the shoebox receipts that spoke to me, because <laughs> I'm like, I did that, been there. All righty, we got a question right here.
Okay, I have a question, and, and this question, I like to ask it a lot, and the reason I ask this is because a lot of people in the audience, they don't, some, some people are shy, but when you come to a conference like this, like this, what is your opinion like, all right, we're excited here now, and everybody's fired up, they're seeing the success of everybody around, they're making new contacts, what is your advice to everybody out here to be able to, to apply this when they get home? Because when you get home, it's a different story, and you have, you're going to have to get some, some mustard, about that, if I say it that way. What is your advice to be able to, when you leave here, to be able to apply it and to continuously move forward? Anybody? Go ahead, my Sheree. Okay, I would say my first advice was is that before you get here, you should have a plan on who you want to talk to. It is a lot of people here, and you should know who will speak to you, who will educate you. If you have a couple of booths that you happen to stumble upon, okay, but there was a website that was posted and everyone was listed, and it was in categories, okay? So in trucking, you're gonna need to have a ELD, or a dispatcher, a finance, like you hit all of those points. And then once someone speaks to you and you've received those cards, you then go and follow up with them. That's the word, follow up. What my mentor told me, the, mo the, the money's in the follow-up, okay? Yep, you call me, you say me. something, I have to follow up with you. And it works the same way if you have your own business and you've talked to one of us and you say, oh, that's nice, I want to talk to them. Do not go home with that bag, I see all these bags, and put them in the corner. No, you have to follow up because maybe all of the stuff that you received, it doesn't work. You got to go through it, you got to watch, you got to research and actually do it consistently. And that's hard, because I'm talking to y'all, I'm talking to myself. It's hard. But definitely follow up and make, and being consistent with the follow up, because it's, just, it's a muscle that you need to work. It's, you really just got to work the muscle of following up and being consistent. Right. All right, we got two more and then we're out of here. So, what's your question? My question is for uh, Miss Sherry. I have a good question. Now, you've been talking about education, but your niche is really niche down. And you said about refusals, can you give us a few examples of what refusals would be? Yeah, so from a refusal perspective, um, there's several ways that you can get a refusal. Um, and some of the ways that you know most people think aren't the actual ways. And so one example which we see a lot um, at our company is a driver that um, has checked in into the lab um, for their for their drug screen and they've you know took a phone call stepped out smoked cigarette or something like that and they missed their name being called um, that is what we're seeing is being considered a refusal now that's what we've seen many many times and talked to many many drivers that have had that situation um, so make sure that you stay in the lobby make sure that you are there um, and that you can hear your name being called now talking to the fmcsa that is not a refusal and so education not only on the driver side but also education on the drug testing facility side because there's some drug test facilities that are giving drivers refusals and they're in and they're getting violations in the clearinghouse that aren't. And so what the FMCSA has said is that a refusal um, in that regard is if you touch the cup, if you touch the cup and not take the test, that is considered a refusal for pre-employment only. If you touch the cup, not if you don't show up um, pre-employment. So if you have a job and you're not, you know, you, you've decided to go with a different company and you don't go take the drug test, that's not considered a refusal. So we're seeing more and more changes and there's a lot of discrepancies. Um, so we tend to go to the source, which is the FMCSA. Great. Our last question right here over on the left-hand side. Hello. Um, Trucker Nini from Minnesota. So Desiree, I have a question for you. I think this is an important topic and we put a lot of responsibility on companies, but frankly, as a fellow driver, we too have a responsibility for diversity and inclusion. I mean, I wish I had a, a window clean for my own truck so that people of color, people of different religions or whatever, knew that they could come up and approach me because I'm open to having a conversation or helping them. So what would you say to the drivers out there that are using terms like steering wheel holders, the new breed? Um, we have a responsibility to stop it ourselves. 
What would you say to fellow yeah. truck drivers? Yeah, you know, that, and that term, uh, you know, the steering wheel holder and putting down the, the new people that are coming in. I mean, uh, the, the drivers that are entering, they, they didn't enter wanting to be a steering wheel holder. They wanted to come in and be professional drivers and because of a lack of education and a lack of preparation in this industry, um, they end up in these carriers where they get less skills. They are in automatic trucks. They are um, having a lot of uh, the responsibilities taken away from some of the older drivers. And in, in my opinion, it, 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 it hurts them because now they don't have navigation skills. They don't know how to read a map. Um, they've kind of been set up for failure. I would say to, and I, and I took it to, I know there's a lot of bullying of the YouTubers. I've, I mean, I had death threats. I was one of the first uh, truck drivers on Twitter. That's how I got to the things that I've done through Twitter. Uh, YouTube, um, there was bullying. I got death threats. I know a lot of the other uh, people, influencers on TikTok, have experienced the same thing. But I would just say, just keep trying to spend, send the message. And if you have a big following, prepare the people that are following you to follow the steps to don't get a restriction on your license. You wanna learn the old school way now, because it's going away. It's going away. And you don't wanna be dumbed down. Um, you wanna, you know, everything that you can learn from the veterans before they're gone of this industry. It's really important. Um, and, and getting back to that, that fair labor standards, you know, when we start having autonomous trucks, they're gonna want us to do that last mile work. Well, right now, last mile work doesn't pay us. So we, we have to start being unified on where this industry is going for the wages to make this still a viable career when we start having these autonomous vehicles. So everybody that's an influencer, start being more aware, like less with the, with, the, with the ego stuff and more about the issues that are affecting drivers in the long term for this career. Right. All righty. Let's give all our panelists a hand. Now at this time, let's put our hands together for the founder and the CEO of She Trucking, Sharon. together um, and allow me to show you what diversity and inclusion look like. I didn't come on stage to be on a panel because they represented what it looks like, what it, what this industry really looked like, right? And so um, thank you everyone for all your support. Um, I have Mr. Bobby up here that, and it was just so important to bring him up here um, because he has been going through a lot at this truck show. And I want to let him know that we support you and what you're doing. Uh, we have to unify and we have to take care of each other out here. And so this was important not only to me, but also with Mr. Bobby. I don't know if you have anything to say. I just want to say, you know, um, in 50 years of the show, um, I'm really proud that we was able to pull together uh, to be the first LGBTQ truck organization and nonprofit to actually be here. Woo! It shouldn't have taken 50 years to do that, but I'm very proud and we're not going anywhere. We're going to drive America forward and we're going to stick to that goal and work with great organizations to do that. And all of these people right here are the reason and the drive that I kept going. They all inspire me, every one of them, um, and especially this one. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all so much. All right, y'all, that concludes our show. What we have, uh, we've been giving out shirts. We've been giving out the sheet trucking shirts. we also been giving out my brand, which is Highway Hustling. So you can go and order you a shirt. If you don't have one today, you can go to highwayhustling.com and get you a shirt. Also, you can go to, to the, uh, if you want a sheet trucking shirt, you can go to the website or you can scan the QR code over there to be able to donate to the nonprofit. If you want to donate to the nonprofit organization, you can scan the QR code. The shirts is on SheTrucking.com. Our um, nonprofit organization is on SheTruckingExpo.com. And if you want to be a part of our event, the She Trucking Expo in 2023, go to SheTruckingExpo.com as well. Thank you all. Have